Keir Starmer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Monday, the Prime Minister treated us to his seventh relaunch in 18 months. He vowed to take on the dangers that threaten the country. So it was good to see the Minister for Common Sense immediately take up that mantle by announcing a vital crackdown on the gravest of threats, colourful lanyards. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the real world, after 14 years of Tory government, the prison system is in chaos. Does the Prime Minister think that his decision to let prisoners out 70 days early makes our country more secure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, civil service impartiality is an important principle that we're right to support. But and perhaps he could ask his Chief of Staff about that. But uh, actually, on Monday, what I did do is outline the serious security threats that our country faces from an axis of authoritarian states. Russia poisoning people on our streets, China targeting our democracy, Iranian proxies firing on British ships, and yet he won't back our plan to increase defence spending. Now, we all know why, especially with the Deputy Leader and indeed the Shadow Foreign Secretary, who voted to scrap our nuclear deterrent. It's clear that you simply can't trust Labour with our country's security. Well, I I appreciate he's been busy on the front line of the war against lanyards, Um, (laughs) but he must must have missed this. I was the first to call for 2.5% on defence spending. The last time it happened was under the last Labour government, but it needs a credible plan, not his fantasy economics. But I am disappointed to see that version 7.0 of his time in office doesn't extend as far as answering questions or giving any information on those prisoners he is releasing early. Basic details like how many, where are they, what crimes have they committed. So will he at least guarantee that none of the criminals he is instructing prisoners to release early are considered high risk. Mr Speaker, there are strict eligibility criteria in place with exclusions based on public safety and no one would be put on the scheme if they were deemed a threat to public safety. But he talks about 2.5%, Mr Speaker. So if he does think it is important, as I think he just actually stood up and acknowledged that it was the right thing to do, we've got a fully funded plan to actually deliver an increase in defence spending. And and it's him and his party who have refused to match that commitment. This land is £46 billion pound fully funded. Uh, if anyone was looking for the perfect metaphor for this shambolic government, we saw it on Monday. The Prime Minister woke up deciding his latest rebrand was Mr Security. But within hours, the Tory party was being investigated for accidentally publishing the personal details of hundreds of people. Mr Speaker, he must be the only tech brother on the continent who can't work a debit card or send an email. But he's not answered my question, so I'll try it again. Are any of the prisoners he is currently letting out early considered to be high risk. (laughs) Mr Mr. Speaker, he keep he just showed spectacularly why he's just not fit to lead this country into the future. This country country has a proud tradition of leading the world. We led the world when it came to the Industrial Revolution. But if he was around, if he was around, he would have probably called James Watt the steam bro, Mr Speaker. What we're doing is preparing the country for the future. But when he talks about the prison scheme, let me be crystal clear. No one would be put on the scheme if they were deemed a threat to the public. Offenders are subject to the toughest of licensing conditions. And if those conditions are broken, they are back in prison for considerably longer. But what's his record on this? He voted against tougher sentences for violent criminals. He actually opposed opposed new powers for the police to tackle violent crime, voted against new laws that have arrested a thousand criminal people smugglers. The message is crystal clear. He can't be trusted to keep this country safe. 
I appreciate that all this rebranding is taking all of his time, but he may want to read the recent inspection report into Lewis Prison. On this topic, I've asked him twice about. It documents, it documents page five, high-risk prisoners being released at short notice without sufficient planning. Page 46, a high-risk prisoner had his release date brought forward despite a history of stalking, domestic abuse and a restraining order. Shame. Their words, he was a risk to children. Yeah. Does the early release of stalkers, domestic abusers and those considered a risk to children sound like the work of someone who is making the country more secure? Yeah. Oh, Mr Speaker, as I've said, as I've said, no one should be put on this scheme if they are a threat to the public. And let me be crystal clear, it does not apply. And let me be absolutely explicit, it does not apply to anyone serving a life sentence, anyone convicted of a serious violent offence, anyone convicted of terrorism, anyone convicted of a sex offence. And crucially, in contrast to the system that Labour had put in place, Mr Speaker, governors in the prison service have an absolute lock so that no one is put on the scheme who shouldn't be. But thankfully, Mr Speaker, it, their scheme let out thousands upon thousands of violent offenders onto our streets and even two terrorists. Thankfully, we have toughened up sentencing against those criminals with new legislation, but he voted against it, Mr Speaker. Well, I am glad to hear that those on life sentences are being released early, and he may not think that releasing domestic abusers is a problem, but Labour has repeatedly called for domestic abusers to be exempt from his scheme to release prisoners early. His government has shamefully ignored those calls. So now, now we have the evidence that domestic abusers are being released early. The Lewis Report, Prime Minister, will he finally change course and back Labour's calls? Mr. Mr Speaker, as I've been crystal clear, there is an absolute governor lock on people who are put on the scheme. And in contrast to the last Labour scheme, prisoners were let out with no supervision, no electronic tags. In fact, 80,000 offenders were let out. 16,000 were violent, Mr Speaker, leading to multiple murders committed. We fix that system. But when it comes to this question, not only are we building the business, biggest prison programme in history, we are also deploying rapid deployment cells. And, Mr Speaker, because on this side of the House, we understand the importance of prison, unlike one of his front benchers who said, one of his front benchers, and I said, who quote, prison doesn't prevent crime. It's always the same with the Labour Party, soft on crime and soft on criminals. Yeah. He's literally letting criminals out early. Uh, Mr Speaker, the only answer to the question I asked whether domestic abusers should be exempt from his early release scheme from anyone serious about security is yes. Perhaps the most ludicrous part of the Prime Minister's speech on Monday was when he said he won't accept the idea that any of the problems people are facing are caused by the 14 years of Conservative government. He won't say how many prisoners they have released early. He won't say if they are burglars, abusers or stalkers. He won't say where they are or what support their victims are getting. Yet he thinks he has the right to tell people they can't blame his government for any of it. Doesn't he think that, rather than confiscating lanyards like some jumped-up milk monitor, he should stop issuing get-out-of-jail cards free to prisoners considered a risk to children? Mr Speaker, another week with no ideas and absolutely no plan for the country. They've had 14 years to think about nothing but the future, but all they can do is talk about the past, Mr Speaker. But I I am surprised, because what he didn't bring up that has happened in the last week since we met is that statistics confirm that we have now had the joint fastest growth rate in the G7 this year, Mr Speaker. The Bank of England said that the economy had turned a corner. Ian Y said our growth was impressive. The chief economist of the Independent Office for National Statistics said the economy is going gangbusters, Mr Speaker. Now, the Shadow Chancellor may want to copy and paste their comments into her next speech. Or does she think they're all gaslighting the British public too? 